Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter. Yep, it's very cold in here. I just noticed on the viewfinder there I can see my breath. <laughs> We're in the middle of winter. But I'm feeling okay because I've got a nice warm jacket on. Christmas present to myself. Oh, Happy New Year by the way. Okay, so in this video we're going to be taking a look at this fella, which is the Interpet. Oh, I was going to say IF, but it's PF2. Now, there's four filters in this range, which range from one to four. And this one is suitable for tanks up to 81 litres, which when you see the size of it, you'll think is a little bit pessimistic compared to what most manufacturers promise. I don't know, they just seem to be quite an, well, a very honest good quality company. They're not one of the big boys, but you'll see from this filter that it's pretty decent. So let's take a look. Okay, so that's the filter there. PF2. If you're interested in this, I'll put a link in the video description and also in the pinned comment. So the water's drawn in through the front. It then goes up through a one-way valve, which is pretty important because when you come to clean this fella out, you just remove it from the cradle and lift it out and all the water doesn't then just drain out the bottom. With standard internal filters you tend to find that when you lift them out, just the act of lifting them out dislodges a lot of the very fine muck that's stuck in the foams and so on and a lot of it comes back into the tank. So it goes in the front, up from the bottom, through a series of pads and then through some filter media. There's a little air intake on the top here. So we've got on and off. That's on, air gets sucked in as the water's being blasted out of here. So it mixes it in, it's a venturi sort of effect. That's good because there's no pipes or any sort of fiddly valves or anything. It's all just built into the top. This would normally operate with a water level just below that. So that's our outlet. It's got adjustable flow. You'll see how that works in a moment. And then it's got an end on here which can be twisted up and around to fire either way, up in the air or down. Probably best if you fire it down then it gives the air bubbles a chance to rise up quite a long way. But that's up to you and I'll just take that off in case I end up breaking it when I pull this thing apart. We'll get it out of the cradle. Oh, incidentally, it's got very good suckers on the back of there. Often with internal filters you get really weak suckers and because of the weight of this thing and surely because of the weight it's going to become when I pimp it up, you want good suckers on there otherwise this is just going to slide down the tank. So it's got quite a standard release mechanism for taking this bottom part off. So you've got a little hole there and a hole here which has got a barb fitting. These parts press in to release the barb and that allows us to take the top off very gently <laughs> like so so that's one section that's our other section and that is full of ceramic media in this little cage which can be taken off not sure whether this can actually be disassembled to put anything else in because I would quite like to see carbon in there or even a carbon pad or something as the last stage of filtration so we'll investigate that later. That is our flow regulator. It basically regulates how much water is drawn in by the pump and therefore how much can be spat out by the pump. Finished with the head now. We don't need that. I think we'll move to this bottom part. I'll just take this off. That's like our grill that goes on the front, just to strain out any heavy muck and stop fish getting sucked in. In there, we've got our one-way valve, which I should be able to show you. There we go. So that allows water through, but it doesn't allow it back out. And if I just take that off, you'll see that the water can then get into where this cartridge is inside of here. And before I show you the cartridge removed, I'll just explain that that is where the water comes up and out. And if I take the cartridge out, 
flip it over, you'll notice that it's drawn in here. So effectively the water comes in this side through the coarse foam. It then goes through some carbon pad, through a fine pad, and then out through this, through the biological media, which basically just sits on top, and then gets pumped back to the tank. So the water has to travel quite a long way in that short space. To show you the foams, that's our coarse one, that's where the water goes through, and then on the other side we've got our carbon pad and our fine pad. So by the time the water leaves this section it will be clean just before it hits the biological media. So as far as where the pad is and where the media is, that is in the correct order. But ideally I would like to see the system go mechanical, biological, then chemical. So whilst off the shelf this is a pretty good setup, you know, as far as internal filters go, I think we can do significantly better with this pretty much just by discarding this whole thing and swapping the filter media in here for some carbon. Mm, I was going to reuse this foam perhaps in the bottom of here but I think I would like to send everything back intact to Anthony who sent me this. Oh actually I never never thanked them. Thank you very much Anthony for sending me this, much appreciated because I've wanted to have a look at one of these for a while and it's a pretty good filter. Right so that can get put to one side. This will hopefully come apart. I don't want to break it so I think I'll try pushing the media here and try to pop that out. Now, I don't want to break this thing before I send it back and I think by trying to dig it out this way it might break it but if I can push the media here it might just pop this bottom of the grill out. We shall see. Ah, there we go. Spot on. Excellent, that's popped it out. And that is our biological media. That's actually not a bad amount. I thought there'd be less than that because that, that just seems tiny. You wouldn't think all that would fit in there, but it was laid in very neatly. Um, yeah, and I think carbon might actually go through there into the pump, especially the pelletized stuff. So I'm going to have a look around for a carbon pad and put that in there. Of course, you don't have to put carbon in this top bit. You can put more bio media if you want. Carbon isn't essential. It's really just put into filters to draw in smells to soak up any residual treatments and also a lot of manufacturers put it in the likes of canister filters just to mask the fact that the filter isn't doing a good job. If you've got a filter that's properly set up and correctly sized for your tank and stock you won't get any smells because you not have the ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. Everything will be processed. So carbon really is an option that you would just add in as and when you need it. For example, if you just trep the fish, you know, after seven to ten days or whatever, put a bit of carbon in the filter, draw in any residual treatment, and then your water is kind of back to square one and good to go again. Or if you've got the likes of bogwood in the tank that's staining the water a little bit too much, you can put carbon in, it'll draw that colour in. And then after seven or eight weeks, I would suggest chucking that carbon away, seeing if the problem of the coloured water persists. If it doesn't, then don't bother adding more carbon in. If it does, then add carbon in until that problem ceases to be a problem. So we're just going to cut a little bit of carbon pad for this top section. Just roughly, because it'll squash in. There you go, that's a little bit bigger than the aperture on there, but it'll squash in perfectly. Look at that. And because it's a pretty coarse impregnated sponge, the water will get through there easily, because before that you're going to have a, at least a pad or two, and your fine pad. So that's our last section put back in place there. 
that's the chemical so we're going to go mechanical biological chemical don't have to go chemical though as I said before you can add more biological in here if you want to or if you wanted to add more tannins into the water you know make it more suitable for the likes of South American fish you could actually fill this up with alder cones alder cones are really potent and you could get quite a few in there so as the water is being drawn up it'll release all of that goodness into the water for your fish so that's looking down inside of the main body as you can see the water comes in the bottom and it basically just flows up the inside of there and looking at that makes me you know doubly sure that we don't need this internal cartridge we can just run this as a simple bottom up filter what am I going to go with yeah I better go with a coarse so I'll go with a coarse pad in there if I can get a medium in maybe medium or I might just jump straight to fine and then I think I'll just go with a bag of media in here and we should get quite a lot in there okay so I've managed to find a coarse pad that's not quite as coarse as the majority of the ones that I sell so it's somewhere between a coarse and a medium that's going to be perfect so I'm going to put that bumpy side down into the bottom of here and then over the top of there I'm going to put a reasonably bouncy fine pad so really we're just going straight from medium slash coarse sponge to fine and that'll be no bother at all in there we've got a reasonable thickness of foam to catch the muck that doesn't look far off It's difficult to see, but that is in the bottom there. Fits beautifully. But again, this wants to be just slightly bigger than this opening so that none of the water just flies up the side. Because if it does, we've kind of defeated the object of putting a fine pad in because its job is to catch the fine muck before it hits the filter media. And that's our fine pad in. Now I will not lie, it's going to be a lot easier to take this manufacturer's cartridge out of here than it is to get these foams out again. But when they're wet, all you've got to do is just tip them upside down and they'll just fly out because they'll be heavy with muck. So just bear that in mind. Right, I'm going to fill a little mesh bag with some bio gravel and we'll see how much we can get in there. Okay, just for reference, there was 45 grams of media which came out of that top section in the little cartridge at the top there. Of course, we replaced that media with a carbon pad. And in our main section, above the coarse and fine pad, I've managed to fit a little bag of bio gravel in there and there's approximately 180 grams now you could probably get up to 200 grams of media in there but when you put the top on it would squash it down a little bit too much so this is you know it's a sensible amount to put in there as you can see when I put the top on if I can remember which way the top went on <laughs> There we go. It's not squashed down, but it is packed out. And that is our filter complete. So now we've got the mechanical side of things being the screen on the front, the coarse pad, fine pad. That is our water all done clean in the bottom section. Then we've got a bag of biological media which in this case is the bio gravel but of course you can use anything you want and then in the top just before the water leaves the filter we've got the carbon pad so we've got mechanical biological chemical all in one neat filter so the interpet pf2 very well made filter um, it holds 
reasonable amount of media very easy to upgrade if you wanted to do these sort of changes even if you didn't want to do these changes then it's still got quite a lot about it and I think it's just a pretty good well a very good quality good value filter as all of the Interpet stuff is Interpet also do a good range of treatments as well so I would recommend their treatments as well as their filters this is the PF range but there's also filters called CF as well and I think I've made at least one Pimp My Filter video on one of those I think it was a CF3 and that's like a, a hang on the back filter that actually hangs inside the tank the water comes in like a little waterfall again that is a really really easy one to upgrade if you wanted to and they're just good value good quality filters so I'm going to get this back off to Anthony now. I think I'll put a bit of extra media and foams in as well because I took quite a while between them sending me this and me making the video. So I'll put a bit extra stuff in his box as an apology for getting it back to him late. So I am sorry, Anthony. It doesn't normally take me this long. But I've had a project that I've been doing over the Christmas holidays, which is pretty awesome. Nothing related to aquatics. It's actually something in my garden. If you are interested, you can check the video on that out on my Thousand Yard Stair channel. That's my other channel where I kind of go into like self-sufficiency, gardening, outdoors, bushcrafty sort of stuff. I'll put the link in the video description. Oh man, I haven't even told you what size tank I would recommend this for. I'm just slavering away. Um, well, we've only got well roughly 200 grams of media in, so... I think for the recommended size of maximum tank, 80 litres, yeah, we're not probably going to get a full cycle on there. But if you weren't bothered about bringing the nitrate all the way down to zero and achieving a full cycle, which, to be honest, you could really only do with a bigger filter, possibly an external filter on a tank that size, then, yeah, 80 litres easily you know it probably is a bit more i still think 80 liter tank for a filter of that size is a little bit pessimistic unless you've got a reasonably heavy stock um you'd, you'd probably get away with this on a 100 liter tank if the stock was reasonably light and it was well planted you know a well laid out tank it's a decent sized filter it holds a respectable amount of media it's got good features, like the little air intake, which I, ha I haven't seen one like that before, and I, I do appreciate that. There's nothing worse than when you get the little bit of pipe that comes out the top and it keeps falling off, it goes brittle and it, it won't squash on properly. Or you get ones with like little spigot type things that push in the top that always seem to fall out and get lost. There's nothing here to get lost. A good filter, good price. Thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next video.